Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are going to start our time off by reading from the scriptures from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them. He said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph and there was the baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all of these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, and it was just as the angel had told them. Well, good morning, and thanks again for joining us this morning. It is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to our online service today. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. want to mention our Christmas Eve services. We are so excited. We've been working hard on them. Uh, they are going to be happening December 22nd, which is the Tuesday at 6.30, December 23rd, which is the Wednesday at 6.30, and then on Christmas Eve, December 24th at 1 o'clock, and again at 6.30. And we want to encourage you uh, to be inviting your family, your friends, your neighbors uh, to join us via Facebook Live for those. Uh, we are so excited at what God is going to do in the hearts and the minds of us and of our community uh, through those services and through the message of the good news that Jesus is here with us now. Also want to mention December 27th, uh, which is the Sunday, we will not be having a digital online service. So we're going to be giving our production team the opportunity uh, to take a Sabbath to have a break after working so hard on those Christmas Eve services. Uh, but we will still be gathering in person for those three uh, gatherings to be reading the word together, to be praying together. Uh, it was a wonderful time the last time we did it. And so we're so excited uh, for to do it again uh, coming up on the 27th. So if you want to be a part of that, you just have to pre-register uh, by texting that number 780-604-3363 and letting us know who's coming. And we just uh, encourage you to come and be a part of that special time right after Christmas. All right. Also want to mention our Zoom prayer is going to be happening today after the service. So as soon as the service is done, uh, Leah and myself are going to be heading on over to the Zoom prayer room. Uh, if there's anything on your heart, on your mind, we'd love to be connecting with you in that way. So you can find that on the online gatherings page on our website. Okay. So make sure you come and you join us there. All right, so Pastor Ken says the people have spoken. They have declared which Christmas song they want to hear. So let's head on over and find out what that is right now. Did you know? 
your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you and this child that you soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby The people have spoken. And as someone who first and foremost wants to be a man of God, as a man of God, I also want to be one who loves others. And thus, I share with you this video, Mary, Did You Know? I've heard you. You love this song. It's endearing to you. And it is endearing to me too. I had many of you actually send me all sorts of different versions of this song this week. I listened to most of them. <laughs> um, this was the one version that I was actually able to get web licensing for, so that's the reason we had to use this one. But it, 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 actually, in all seriousness, um, a, a number of years ago on a show, a show called The Voice, there was a contestant named Jordan Smith that my family fell in love with, and we just loved following the show because of him. And uh, near the conclusion of that season, he sang a version of Mary, Did You Know, which I obviously can't play and put um, online for you. So uh, nonetheless, if you love that song, that's a version you need to look up uh, Jordan's version um, on The Voice. So good. Um, and anyways, uh, in the midst of my friendly opening of, of myself to banter with you, Someone came at me on Facebook, particularly at my second favorite Christmas song, Brother Land, of all people, believe it or not. <laughs> For those of you who are part of our digital family who do not know Brother Land, he is a shoot straight kind of guy, but he has a big heart and he can take this, okay? Like him and me are good, don't worry. So if you're don't know Brother Wayne or Brother Land, um, it's, it, it, this is all good, don't worry. But anyways, I quote, in regards to my second favorite Christmas song, he has the gall to say, please show me in scripture the evidence of singing angels. My Bible tells me the angels only said. They spoke, not sang. Could it be that singing praise is given only to man? Hmm, Brother Wayne, just poking the bear there, if you will. Uh, 
And um, although I'm kind of joking around right now and uh, what have you, this I'm serious about. I'm fully convinced that God loves us and is honored by a multi-generational gathering, a multi-ethnic gathering, where we put aside our differences of opinion, particularly around things like music, and choose to just say, you know what? The style doesn't matter. The Savior is the one at the forefront. And so we, we join in singing often um, as a means to keep the Savior at the forefront and put aside our preferences. That I'm convinced of. And yet, Brother Wayne, uh, after I had a little while to think about this, made a light bulb go on for me. Now, knowing what I just said is something that I believe with all my heart and I'm convinced of. My personal favorite style of worship is when you take something that's traditional and you put it with something completely off the wall or untraditional and you meld these things together and they become like this beautiful um, harmony of things that should have never gone together but they go together. Specifically for me, I love it when spoken word is added to contemporary or traditional worship music. Now, some of you might not understand what I mean by spoken word, so I'll say it like this. Rap. I love it when rap is included with traditional Christian song. In fact, knowing everything I already said about worship, I've actually only been able to worship in a gathering like this once, this side of heaven. And it was awesome for my soul. Like, I literally felt like I was before the throne room of heaven as a hip-hop artist sang in unison with an acoustic guitar, and, and together they praised, and, and my heart was just like, blown away by this. I'm being serious right now. That is 100% my favorite style. And then Brother Wayne got me thinking, maybe the angels rap. If they only speak, perhaps they speak in a spoken, rhythmic way, and we will be able to worship with the angels in a way that we never imagined before, but my heart has always longed for. Huh? And then, and then to make this even better, as I was searching for Mary Did You Know, because I wanted oh so badly to play this for you all, because I love you, and you love that song, I found this. Let's roll it. When it comes to this season, I'm reminded of the past. Over 300 messianic prophecies came to pass. With the birth of a child, both God and man, our deliverer of sin, born with a battle plan. Sin waged war in our lives since the day of our birth, but now the deliverer, our rescuer, has come to break that curse. That which has separated us from the Father on this earth is about to be defeated by the coming of our King and Lord. Oh Mary, did Mary, you know? Did you know that your baby boy on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed he made an appeal to the father our judge by his death on our behalf satan never anticipating the aftermath the chains are broken the captives are set free the oppressed and depressed can lift their heads because we are free indeed our redemption sealed by the blood through the sacrifice of the one born to die so that you and i can find the life he died for to ensure forever more the cure for death oh mary did you mary, know did you know that 
that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man Mary did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand did you It is finished, my debt is paid in full. Can I ever fully grasp what it took to save this soul? But I will lift my head and I will bear my cross. I've been sanctified by the blood so Satan can count his loss. The victory's mine by birthright, reborn in his name. Authority over evil because of the price that he paid. I see the heavens open wide and seated at the right hand of God. He's the one and only son, the rescuer of the world seating and glorying authority oh mary did you know the blind will see the, will the see. deaf will hear the, the will dead hear. will live again oh, mary, did you know? the lame will leave the dumb will speak the, the, the praise is on the land oh, mary, you know? do you know oh, God, the that your baby boy Mary, did you know it's up there with Little Drummer Boy for me now? Uh, hey, listen, yeah, you want to play along with this a little more, I'm actually going to literally go on our uh, Facebook uh, page right now, and in our stories, I'm putting up a little poll. Mary, did you know traditional, or Mary, did you know spoken word? And hey, if you're watching with this with your kids, their vote counts too, okay? Okay. Let's see what the people of Fort Alliance uh, prefer. Traditional spoken word. All right, have some uh, uh, fun with that. Anyways, in a, a wild way, if you will, like this differences of opinion of music, and, and I know we're just having fun, but in all seriousness, I believe this. This actually paints the, the perfect picture for the point I want to make today, and here's what really matters. It doesn't really matter what type of music you like or don't like. But, but even more than that, God longs for a multi-generational, multi-ethnic people to come to know him and to worship him. And the, the Christmas account of Luke chapter 2 makes this oh so clear. That, that we have a Savior who has come for all people. And, and all the things that make us unique and, and make us different those, those things are, are beautiful, but in the end, what really matters is Jesus has come for all. And that's what I want us to focus on this morning. Let me just re-emphasize uh, that for us from Luke chapter 2. I'll read a couple of those verses again. That night there were shepherds staying in fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but an angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. Not sung. <laughs> I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. A savior had been born. And the angel proclaimed this good news. I want to center in on that word. See, this, this word good news in our modern Christian circles um, has 
automatically moved us to this place where we think of the gospel, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, as it should, and this is completely accurate. But I want to uh, unpack this phrase, good news, a little bit more as we get going. See, this phrase, good news, is an, uh, an ancient word. Um, in our original languages here, it would actually be the word euangelion, and, and this word was really a post-military word. Uh, here's, here's what I mean by that. Let me set up a bit of a picture. Uh, I mean, imagine being part of a, a community or a region, a city or a village, uh, thousands of years ago. And your, your community, your, your region is engaged in some type of literal war. And, and in the midst of this literal war, this season of war that you find yourself in, the um, the fighting um, trained soldiers, the, 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 the able-bodied men of the community or the region are away at the front line, um, fully ready and, and fully engaged in battle. And yet, back in your region or your, your, your community, there you are. The women and the children, the, the elderly men, just waiting. I mean, it, this is very difficult for us, 2020, North America, Canada, Fort Saskatchewan, to maybe picture. But like, think about it. There you are, waiting to see what happens, to figure out what's next for your region, your community. And if it doesn't go your way, I mean, at the very least, you likely become an occupied community or region. Most likely, more likely, uh, an enslaved or a completely uh, captive type people now. Not uncommon to have enemy come in and pillage, rape, kill, there you are, just waiting. I mean, I, I, I can only imagine the anxiety, the worry, the fear that sets in as day by day goes by or as week by week, maybe even month by month goes by. Now, I, I don't think this is necessarily a, a fair comparison because that picture is something beyond what I've ever experienced or could even imagine. But to say that we are people that are sitting there waiting, wondering what's next is literally where we're at. We live in a community, uh, a region, a world that is just bound by fear right now. It's a daily message that we have to navigate and process. Go back to that um, picture of uh, waiting a few thousand years ago. One day, you see someone running towards your region, running towards your community. And he is shouting, you and Galleon, you and Galleon. Or as we would say in English, good news, good news. We won. This is the way in which this term was used in ancient days. Good news, we won. A message that in the midst of this fear of this waiting is like, no more concern of, of, of being taken captive, of death, of pillaging, of worse. Like this, it's relieved, released. That, 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 that feeling, that sense is gone. This is the, the term and the roots of this word, good news. Bring it back to today. We have a community, a region, a world so desperately in need of good news. 
good news that is for all people. A Savior has come. We won. A Savior has come. A message that brings hope. And for us at Fort Alliance, our, our desire is that in this season, this Christmas season, we might bring this message of hope to our community, our region, our world, as digitally we shout, shout euangelion, good news. And this is a little bit different in how I would normally prepare, how I would normally communicate to you, but for Alliance and our extended digital family who, who week after week tune in, we want to invite you to join us in shouting and then in praying that this good news would just go out in ways we never imagined. We want to invite you to be a part of uh, of sharing, of liking, of commenting. I do not fully, I don't know if I can fully understand the algorithms of digital church, and I'm not even sure I want to, if I'm honest. But nonetheless, the more you engage with us online, the more we're able to have this good news message go out. And we have, via our volunteers and our staff, we have put in hundreds of hours to prepare for this week to ensure that we can Proclaim at the top of our lungs good news. The King has come. Jesus, a Savior, has been born. And so would you join us in inviting and sharing this good news via your social media and, and the other platforms that you have available to, to shout you and Gillian and good news. We just want you to be a part of this. This is us taking a message of hope that is so desperately needed in our world today. And finally, uh, we want to invite you to pray. We know that this is such a significant season and we want to pray as we lean into it. We're going to actually give you right now some, some silence in this service. And it's there for a reason. It's there because we want you, as you're watching this, to literally stop and in your heart or even if you're on your own, maybe out loud, to pray, to come before the throne of grace and just pray for our community, our region, and our world and that the message of Jesus, a Savior, has been born for a uh, message for all people will go out at, through Fort Alliance but through the many, many other means that will be out there to join us in prayer. And so, in the moment that you will be given, just in a, a, a second or two here, please, please, literally stop and pray as you watch the service. And we're going to close off by having uh, one of our big brothers, Larry, come forward, and he's going to pray. And so at this point, I'm going to turn it to you. Will you pray for this Christmas season, for our community, our region, and our world? And then Brother Larry will lead us after that.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the blessings you have given us. We thank you for our freedoms. We thank you for our country, our province, and our communities. We thank you for our church and our church leaders. We thank you for Pastor Ken and Pastor Ashley and our church staff for all they have done to keep our in-house services and our digital services going at this time. Lord, we pray for we pray for our government leaders. Give them the wisdom that they may be able to deal with things beyond their, their understanding, especially the COVID virus. We pray, for the, we pray that their decisions will be guided by your will. We lift up the first line workers, Lord, and their families that you would give them strength and patience to deal with this overwhelming situation that we are facing. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick and those who are shut in, those who have lost loved ones during this time. We especially pray, pray for our friends and staff at the Rivercrest Nursing Home that you would help them deal with the loss of their, their fellow residents. And we help and and we, help, uh, we hope, Lord, that the residents and staff who, are, who have been tested positive, Lord, we just pray that you be with them. Lord, we also pray for the inmates at the Fort Saskatchewan Correctional Center who have been tested positive. Lord, as we are, Lord, as we are in the midst of the Christmas season, let us not forget what the season is all about. Father, we thank you for sending us your son, Jesus, to earth and walk among us, bringing us life and hope. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins and taking with you the sins of the world. Lord, during this Christmas season, we ask you to grant us peace and hope, peace and hope in our homes, peace and hope in our churches, and peace and hope in our hearts, especially when it feels like this world around us is spinning out of control. As a church, we wish each one of you peace and hope, happiness, and inner strength that comes from God, being with us and his promise that he will never leave us or forsake us. In Jesus' name, I ask these things. Amen.
friend, thank you so much for joining us today uh, for this service. Uh, we pray and trust that it was a blessing to you. And we want to encourage you to continue praying for our Christmas, Christmas Eve services that are coming up uh, this next week. Be praying that God will be working uh, in the hearts and in the minds of everyone who views those services. That Jesus would be made great and that uh, folks would recognize the joy and the peace uh, that is to be found in him. I also want to remind you again, no online digital service this coming Sunday on the 27th, but we will be having those three uh, in-person gatherings, so make sure that you register for one of those uh, by texting that cell phone number. Also wanted to let you know uh, that if you want to be joining us for prayer, that you can head on over to the prayer room and do that right away. So as soon as we wrap this service, uh, Leah and myself are going to head on over to that Zoom prayer room. And you can find that link by going to our online gatherings page and just hitting enter uh, the prayer room. And we would love to be connecting with you in that way. So friends, our prayer for you this week as we enter into the week of Christmas is that your heart and your mind would be so focused on Jesus that his presence would be filling you and surrounding you with his grace and his peace, his love and his mercy. He loves you, friends, and so do we. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next time.